State handling is a common problem. It doesn't matter what kind of application, sooner or later, you want your components to share information and talk to each other. In this video, I want to show you a simple parent-child communication, an option for component hierarchies, and a more complex solution for state handling in Blazor web applications. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this video, you will learn about component communication and state handling in Blazor web applications. If you watched my free Blazor crash course, you already know about event callbacks. Event callbacks are glorified action and funk implementations that handle calling the state has changed method. Using event callbacks makes a lot of sense when we have a nested component structure and want to call a method on the parent component from within a child component. Let's look at the following Blazor WebAssembly application where we have a page component with a list of cars and a component representing a row in the table. As you can see in the code section, we have a list of the car model type and a delete car method. In the template section, we have a table definition and use a for each loop to render a car item component for every car model in the cars list. We provide the car model to the car property and the delete car method to the delete item property. Now let's open the car item component. In the child component, we have two properties in the code section. We have the car property that holds the car model and we have the delete item property which is of type event callback of car model. In the template section of the child component, we call the invoke async method of the delete item property when a user clicks on the delete link. We provide the car property as an argument to the delete item event callback. Let's run the application to see event callbacks in action. We navigate to the event callbacks page and click on the delete link to remove a car from the list. As you can see, event callbacks allow us to focus on component development and they let us conveniently call a method on the parent component. Sometimes we don't have a simple parent-child situation, but we want to build a component hierarchy. An example could be that we have a page that holds user information. We want to make that user information accessible to every child component without explicitly passing it down the component tree. In the cascading values page component, we define a user property of type user model and assign values to its fields. In the template section of the component, we use the cascading value component and set the value property to the user property we created in the code section. Every component wrapped in the cascading value component has access to the value in the value property even though we do not populate it as an argument when using the component. Let's open the user settings component. We can see that we also have a user property of type user model. But this time, we use the cascading parameter attribute. We can use the user's properties in the template section like a regular property or a regular component parameter. Let's start the application to see cascading values in action. We open the cascading values page and there we see the name and the username of the user. Both properties are rendered in the user settings component which is a child component of the cascading values page. Depending on your use case, you can either use regular component parameters or cascading values. State containers are the most complex communication pattern explained in this video. You can implement it yourself or use a library. We're going to take a look at the basic implementation. The idea is to create a context class registered as a dependency in the application and inject it into the components that need access to the state. Let's open the app state class. We can see a favorite animal string property. Next, we have an on favorite animal change action and a set favorite animal method. 
In the set favorite animal method, we assign the method argument to the property of the app state class, and if there is a non favorite animal change handler registered, we call that handler2. In the program.cs file, we register the app state class as a singleton service. Sharing the same instance across all components makes sure we see the same value across the entire application. Let's open the state container page. We inject the app state instance on the second line and display the favorite animal in the template section. We also have two child components in the template. First, we have the lion component and below we have the snake component. In the code section, we overwrite the uninitialized lifecycle method to register the state has changed method as a handler for the unfavorite animal change event. We also set elephant as the default value. To avoid a memory leak, we also implement the dispose method and unregister the state has changed method from the unfavorite animal change event. Let's open the line component. In the line component, we also inject the app state instance. We have a button in the template section of the component. In the buttons on click handler, we call the set favorite animal method on the app state component to change the value to lion. Let's start the application to see it in action. When we open the page, we see that our favorite animal is the elephant. When we click on the lion button or the snake button, which are rendered in a subcomponent of the page, the value of the favorite animal on the page changes. In this video, we learned about event callbacks, cascading values, and how to implement a shared service as a state container. All three options allow Blazor components to communicate with each other differently. As always, use the option that fits your problem best and do not try to use the same thing for every situation. This video was inspired by the Microsoft documentation and an article by Chris Sainty. Both resources and the source code of the example project are linked in the video description. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel to learn more about .NET development and see you in the next.